Hey everyone, Dave here. And I'm Dirk. And today we're going to do an unboxing. We're going to use the Force. For the Star Wars deck building game, the Clone Wars exp expansion. Well, it's standalone expansion. I mean, you could play with well, just this. That answered the first question I had because I wasn't sure. Yeah, so <laughs> you can buy just this and be able to play two players. Or you could combine it with the base game. which You could would... combine it with the base game or a second copy of this, either way you want. Right. And you could play up to four players. So you could actually have someone be the Rebels, someone be the Empire, someone be the Separatists, and someone be the um, Old Republic. So, without any further ado, let's open the box and see what's inside. Okay, so yeah, we got the, the rule book. Oh, look, it's a Euro. We got cubes. <laughs> Dave uh, loves Euros. Uh, we've got... So this is the same as like in that base game. So we got some outer rim pilots, and the art, the artwork looks different. And we have the force tracker. So this we're gonna open it up, but it's the way this game goes is one side will have the force of the other, uh, um, and that's based on you know you get some extra powers. The force is on your side. Yeah, we've got uh, um, Misa, everybody's favorite character, Misa C. Jar Jar Binks. Um, We've got uh, starter decks. So we've got the, the clone troopers. Yeah. So we got the resist uh, the old republic, and then we've got the separatists. All right. So let's switch to the other camera, and we'll start. And, and our regular deck too. Oh, and our, yeah. And I've just seen if they got the four player rules in here. In there, or do you have to go online to get them? Oh no, it's a two v two multiplayer rules. So this is something that came up after the first game. So, yeah, so multiplayer mode is two on two. Uh, this can be two copies of the same edition or one copy of each edition, yeah. And then you can adjust the game length. Um, and, oh, pay off neutral cards. So, okay, yep, so there's some new optional rules, which we can look at when we play a game. But Okay, but yeah, we're not going to go through the rule book. But let's go to the card. All right, so let's take a look at the Separatist deck first. Uh, unfortunately, Dirk doesn't have a knife or something I can use. I do. If you're positive, I'll go get it. <laughs> you never want one. That was a running joke, guys. All right, so he's running off to get the knife. Um, okay, so this is the Separatist starting deck. So we have a B1 battle droid. And it, these are the fighting ones. So it provides two fight. It's a droid trooper. Um, so yeah, we have two of those. And then we've got a bunch of Separatist shuttles. These are the ones that provide one money. So we should have like six of these, probably three, four, five, six, oh, seven. So we got seven separatist shuttles. And then we have the dark side agent, which is the one that provides, uh, when you play dark side agent, you can choose one fight, one resource, or one force this turn. So the force is what moves the force marker uh, on there. And then each... So those are basically just almost like clones of the cards that came with yeah, yeah, the original. Yeah, yeah, the arts are different. The yeah. name is slightly different, yeah. And then we've got, in this game, you have a set of bases. So you have a, a starting base, which was Zorn. Uh, Separatist Outpost, start the game with this Whoop, base in play. But, you're out of focus. Oh, I'm out of focus. We probably should, there we go. And it's back out of focus. Oh. Well, yeah, the camera's acting up. It doesn't like it doesn't like this height apparently. Let's move this stuff out of the way for a second. Yeah, sorry, we're fighting the camera here. Uh yeah, so you start the game. There we go. Yeah, sorry about that folks. Uh yeah, the camera is not cooperating. Uh yeah, so this is the starting base that the separatists get and its only power is that you start the game with this base 
Then, so the, the goal of the game is to defeat three bases of your team. So if I'm playing the Separatists and Dirk's playing the, the New Republic, if he is able to destroy this base, then on my next turn, I get to look at my other bases here, choose one, and these guys all have a different power. So Dak here has got 10 hit points, um, and it's got uh, Panic Docks. When you reveal Dak... Purchase a Separatist or Neutral card from the Galaxy Row for free and add it to your hand. So you get a free card. Um, so okay. you, you can always purchase yours. So well, when we get to the cards, you'll see there's a kind of a unique way that the Galaxy Row works in this game versus other deck builders. But there are neutral cards that either player can buy, and then I can get the Separatist cards and Dirk can get the New Republic cards. But I couldn't buy a New Republic card, for example. Right. But there's something else I can do, which we'll get to. Um, we have Felucia, which is Commerce Guild. When Felucia is your base, each of your droid units gain plus one fight. That's pretty cool. I'm going to read this one, and then Dirk can read the next one, the next faction. Uh, we have Geonosius, um, droid foundries. You can spend a resource equal to the cost of the droid in your discard pile, of uh, cost of a droid in your discard pile, and add that card to your hand. And it's got 16 health. Uh... My Gito has got 18 health. It's a the banking clan. While Megito is your base, you do not return unspent resources to the supply at the end of your turn. Oh yeah, so you know you buy what you can. You earn. You generate the resources. That's what the yellow the yellow cubes are as resources. And then any that you don't spend just go away normally. But this space you would be able to keep unspent. The bank, right? Yeah, un, unspent resources, which is nice. So you can have them for the next turn. Um, Kato Neomeda, and I'm sure I'm butchering some of these names. Uh, this is the Trade Federation. When you reveal this card, discard one enemy card from the Galaxy Row. So, New Republic cards would be considered enemy cards for me. Uh, replace it with a different enemy card from the Galaxy discard pile and gain resources equal to the later card cost. And then we got. Lola Sayu, this this is the Citadel. Uh, when you reveal Lola Sayu, place one card from your opponent's discard pile face down under this base. While this base is destroyed, uh, when this base is destroyed, return that card to your opponent's discard pile. I'm not so sure pile. I'd want to be living on that planet. Yeah. <laughs> that, that might not be that might not be the most comfortable place to live. But being able to take one of Dirk's cards and, and deny him after he paid for it, that's nice. Uh, we got Mustafar. <clears throat> which is where Darth Vader's eventual um, castle is at. Um, when you play a neutral card for the first time each turn, draw a card. It's got 14 health. And then we have Onderon, which is Loyal Monarchy. When you... Oops, that one's out of focus. Come on. <laughs> there we go. And it's gone again. Oh. No. Uh, when you reveal Onderon, exile up to three cards from your hand or discard piles. This is a way where you can trash some cards, which is always good in deck builders. And the last one is Sereno. Uh, this is where Count Do Dooku is. And again, it's out of focus. But when you reveal Sereno, you gain four force. So you can move the, the force meter four spots. And it's got 14 health. All right. All right, so that is the starter deck and bases for the Separatists. Okay, and then for the uh, for the Republic here, first thing we've got is we've got two copies of the Clone Trooper here, uh, and those give you two fights. We have, what, three, four, seven, five, six, seven copies of the Republic Shuttle here. Uh, these each give you one resource whenever you play them. And then, of course, we have the Jedi Knight, who gives you... Uh, one fight, one resource, and you can. It allows you to uh, move the force one, whenever you play this one. You choose one of those. Choose one of those. Yeah. Uh, so, and those are basically the same as the other ones, uh, just uh, skinned for the Republic. Uh, for our planets, we start out with Rishi, which is our starting planet. Uh, again, eight hit points doesn't do anything special. You always start with that one. Uh, we have here uh, Anaxis, and Anaxis is a. Uh, Portanoxus is uh, similar that uh, whenever you reveal it, you can either purchase a Republic card 
or a neutral card uh, from the Galaxy row for free and add it to your hand. Uh, also, eight hit points on that one. So just like the one that we saw over here for the uh, for the bad guys. Yeah, you'll notice the bases are pretty much the same. I think there might be a couple unique ones, but a lot of them do the same powers. Just... Yep. Let's see. Here we have Coruscant, which is the heart of the Republic. Uh, it's got 16 hit points on that one, but uh, whenever your turn begins, you reveal a top card of your deck, and you may discard that card. So if you've got a, a card that doesn't do you as much good, like maybe a starter or something, kind of lets you get that out of your hand a little bit, but it's also 16 hit points there. Uh, then we have uh, Camino. Uh, Camino is uh, clone facilities, 14 hit points. Uh, but uh, when you play a trooper, which are the uh, what? The troopers were which ones? The clone troopers. Yeah, the, yeah, those the fight. those two starting fighter guys. These guys. Whenever you played one of these, then uh, for the first time each turn, you add a trooper from your discard pile to your hand. So the first time you play an attack, you can bring an attack back and get extra attack. So that's really cool the way they. Kind of chain those together. And you can purchase more troopers. Yep. Yeah, uh, Ryloth here, Ryloth here, which is a Twi'lek uh, resistance, got 16 uh, hit points on this one. But whenever you reveal Ryloth, you exile an enemy card uh, from the Galaxy Row and place one card from your discard pile into your hand. Oh, no, on, I'm sorry, on top of your deck. Not quite into your hand. Almost. But hey. Uh, okay, then we have uh, Christophysis. Um and that is uh, 14 hit points. It's the Crystal Cities. So whenever you reveal Christophus, uh, you deal four damage to to you. Yeah, you deal four damage to it. But when you play a transport, you get to repair damage from the base. So if you have a lot of transports, you can actually keep this thing healed up and potentially keep it out longer than you would normally, uh, depending on how early or late in the game that could be a little bit easier to do than uh, than not. Uh, next we have uh, Ilum which is 14 hit points. It's got the Kyber Crystal Cave. And whenever you reveal this, uh, then you gain four force. So you can move the uh, force track by four, similar to the one we saw earlier. Uh, we have Kashyyyk. Kashyyyk has got 12 hit points. It's uh, the home of the Wookiees. And so, of course, you've got Wookiee Warriors. Uh, but when you reveal it, you can exile up to three cards from your hand or discard pile. So again, like Dave said, there's our trasher for this one. Love that card. Okay. Oh, we got a couple more. A couple more. Okay. Uh, so then next we've got Naboo. So Naboo's got 12 hit points. It's the Royal Security Force. And while it's in your, uh, while it's your base, each of your capital ships gain two hit points. Now that can be huge because capital ships are a way that uh, you can prevent a lot of times an opponent from attacking you is by throwing a bunch of capital ships in their way. Uh, some of them stay out. Uh, and, and are forced to take the damage first. Others don't necessarily take the damage, but then those tend to actually have a little bit more of an offensive use, so people still like to get rid of them. Capital ships are really good. Uh, then our last one here is we've got Rhodia, uh, which is 14 hit points. Uh, it's got mercenary ties, and whenever you play a neutral card uh, for the first time each turn, you get to draw a card. Card advantage. I love card advantage. Okay, oh. and so those are our planets. All right. Yeah, so there are three factions in this game. So like we've got the Republic, we've got the Separatists, and then we have Neutral. So Outer Rim Pilots, this is a card that um, sticks out. It's always available. It's kind of like Maria, you know, in Legendary or something. Um, so it provides two resources, but you can exile to uh, move the Force Meter. So the Force Meter is this guy here. And it's sort of a, a tug of war. So, yeah. So, basically, if you get the force all the way on your side and you start your turn, you get plus one resource. But it's it's kind of a... It'll go back and forth, as you saw. There were some of the cards that move it four, move it by one, whatever. Uh, so, that's the tug of war on what side the force is on. And then we just got a couple of reference cards. All right, so now we are ready to start taking a look at some of the units here. So let's see, get this open up real quick. Here we go. All right. So Misa start with the bestest card. Everybody's favorite card. Character. Yeah. <laughs> and Misa's out of focus. Um, it's probably for the better. Probably for the better. <laughs> Come on, Misa focus. There you go. Uh, so yeah, we have Jar Jar Binks. Um, so he's cost zero, 
He does not provide anything native, but when you purchase or play Jar Jar Banks, you may spend two resources to gain a force and then place them in your opponent's discard pile. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Eddie costs okay. zero. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, okay. Um, you want to read the next one? Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you do that one, I'll, and then okay. we'll go back and forth. I got a okay. stack here, you got a stack. So, All right. I'll do so we've got two protocol droids. Uh, so they cost one, provide two resources. It's a droid. Um, exile this card to discard cards from the top of the galaxy deck until you disc um, card a card from your faction. Swap that card with a neutral unit in the galaxy row. Uh, we'll go over the galaxy row when we get through the cards. Okay. Uh, so here I've got uh, Ahsoka Tano. Uh, she costs four. She provides three fight and one force. Uh, she's a Jedi. And then uh, you reveal the top card of your deck if uh, the force is with you. So that's any time that it's on... Like, again, on this force row here, anytime, if, if it's in the middle or on your opponent's side, it's not with you. But anytime it's on your side, beyond the central part, it, the force is with you. Uh, so with her, if the force is with you, you can swap the uh, card from your discard pile with the top card of your deck. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Now, before you take this away, as you may notice, there's upside down text. So you sit across from each other, and this is a, a Republic cards. But if I'm playing a Separatist... I would see the card like this. Yeah, you face the card store. It's face up to the f the faction y you are playing is right. face up to you. So I could spend four fight, and I would gain um, three uh, force effect, and Dirk would not be able to purchase this card because then it gets discarded. Yep. So that's, that's sort of the, a, a tug-of-war thing. So the faction cards actually um, have the other team can mess with them. Oh, I didn't realize that none of yours have that. Okay. Not that I've seen so far. I guess I got the neutral sets right here. Uh, all right. So we have a Weequa Pirate, which is another neutral card. Uh, not sure why the camera is struggling to focus today. Sorry about that, folks. Um, yeah, so the Weequa Pirate. Let's see if we can get it. There you go. It's a trooper. So like that one card talked about troopers. So this card could count. It provides two fight, cost one. If you have another neutral card in play, draw a card. Okay. Then here we've got two copies of the ARC uh, 170. The ARC 170 costs four and it provides four fight. It is a, uh, a Republic card. Uh, it's a fighter that uh, you reveal the top card of your deck. Uh, if it's a fighter or a trooper then you get two additional fight on this card. Uh, and for uh, the enemies, uh, if they, for reward for destroying it, they can exile up to two cards from their hand or discard pile. So uh, that's one that, you know, yeah, if I'm uh, if I'm playing the, uh, what, what's that faction called? Uh, Separatist? Yeah, if I'm playing the, the Separatist, uh, then I actually want to be destroying this card because it gives me, card, uh, it gives me, it thins my deck for me. Yeah. All right, then we have another neutral card here, Aura Singh. Uh, she costs two, provides one fight, one force. She's a bounty hunter. While there is a bounty hunter in the galaxy row, Aura Singh gains plus two fight. Okay. Uh, we have two copies of the Lot Gunship. Uh, it is a transport unit for the Republic. It costs four. It provides four resources. Uh, when you play it, but if you reveal the top card of your deck uh, when you play it, if it is a Jedi or a Trooper, then you can draw it. Uh, the inverse side of it is if your enemy destroys it, they gain four resources for destroying that. So, there you go. Alright. Then we have an Underworld Contact. Cost two. Uh, one resource, one force. is Scoundrel. If the force is with you, spend two fewer resources on the next neutral card you purchase. All right. Next we have Commander Cody and his lost airmen, or just Commander Cody in this case. Uh, he is a Republic transport uh, trooper. Uh, he costs four. He provides two fight and two resources when you play him. But uh, if you uh, play him, you place a trooper from your discard pile on top of your deck. And if the force is with you, then you put it in your hand instead. So if the force is with you, you get the additional fight that turn. The inverse reward is if the opponent destroys him, then they gain three force. All right. 
Then we have a Super Commando. Uh, we have two copies of it. Costs three, provides three fight. Uh, it's a trooper. When you purchase this unit, add him to your hand. And you may exile one card from your hand or discard pile if the force is with you. All right. Okay, next we have the man, the myth, the legend. Anakin Skywalker. Uh, before the suit. Uh, so, he is a uh, New Republic, but he costs five uh, provides four fight and one force. Uh, he's a Jedi, and then uh, while the force is with you, he gains three fight. So he fights even better if the force is on your side. But if your enemy destroys him, they gain three resources and they get two force. All right. Then we have two copies of a hut fighter. Uh, it costs three, provides three resources. I don't think Jabba's going to fit that thing very well. No. Uh <laughs> It's a fighter. You can spend two resources to have this unit gain two fight. All right. Now we have Padme Amidala. So she is a New Republic unit, uh, but she costs five, provides three fight and two resources. Uh, she's an officer, and when you play her, you can draw a card, two cards, if your base is Naboo. So if you have the Naboo base out when you play her, you get an additional card. Uh, her reward for being destroyed by the opponent is they get three uh, resources and force two. All right. Uh, then we have Lattice Razi. She costs three, provides three fight. She's a bounty hunter. When Lattice Razi defeats a target in the galaxy row, gain one um, resource for each bounty hunter in play and in the galaxy row. So again, that's like when the card is upside down to you. You, you could spin the fight. You know, if you spin it, if, if she's the one that did it, um, then you get the resource. Okay. And next we have our first capital ship. We have uh, two copies of this in the deck. Now, if you notice, the capital ships don't have the ability to be destroyed by the opponent. You can't destroy those. So the only thing is, like, you know... Since these are New Republic, the New Republic person can purchase them, but there's the only ones who can interact with them without a special ability from another card. But this one costs five, and it provides three resources when it's out. Uh, but whenever you play it, you can place the next card you purchase this turn on top of your deck. So uh, whenever it's out. It's five hit points. And you got five hit points, yeah. So Right. So the capital ships will protect your base, kind of similar to like... Um, In Star Realms. Star Realms, yeah. Uh, all right. We've got... Zam Wessel. He is three cost. He's a bounty hunter. When you play Zam Wessel, choose uh, choose. She gains two fight, two resources, or two force. So this is like an upgraded version of your starter card. It's one of each. And, and if you'll notice, she's wearing a mask. Right. And she's neutral, so <laughs> that means Dirk could purchase her. I, I could purchase her. Alright, next we have a... Uh, a New Republic unit here. It is a vehicle. It is a ATTE. Uh, it costs six. It provides six flights, so it's got some big guns on it. Uh, and then whenever you play it, you can place another unit you have in play on top of your deck. So, uh, yeah, it allows you to basically reuse a, a unit uh, next turn. And the reward for the enemy destroying it is they get to purchase a card uh, of their faction for free. So... That one, yeah, that one, that one you definitely uh, want to try to get that before your opponent does. All right, and then we got two copies of a neutral capital ship. Uh, okay. It costs three, provides two resources. The Aurori class freighter, when this card is defeated, each player may exile one card from their hand or discard pile. Ooh. So, so it helps both sides when it's defeated. It helps both sides when it's defeated. Okay. Yeah, so um, one thing to note when you play, say, 2v2, you actually have two galaxy rows. So it's like maybe Dirk and I are on the same side versus two other people. I might be playing the Separatists and Dirk's playing the Empire, you know, and we're going up against the Resistance and the Republic. Um, so it would just be, but either side can take on capital ships. So I guess that would be each player. So this would be all four players all four could players. exile. So that's pretty cool. But normally, there's very few interactions between mm. um, people that you're not sitting directly across. But there are a little, a few. All right. Uh, so the next we have uh, 
the the Jedi himself, the, another man, one of the big men. Uh, okay, that sounded really bad. That did. <laughs> another one of the major characters. How about that? That's what I need to say. Uh, but uh, he is uh, six cost. He provides four fight and he uh, two force with him. He's a Jedi, and whenever you reveal Obi Wan from your uh, the top of your deck, then you add him to your hand and reveal the next card instead. So if something else reveals him from the top of your deck, you can add him to your hand. Uh, but the reward uh, he costs, it, it takes six to, to get rid of. But what is they get three resources and three force. Okay. And we have two copies of an assassin droid, which is not IG-88, but the same type, type. so you, he could combine with IG-88, I guess. Uh, costs four, four fight, bounty hunter droid. This unit can attack a neutral unit in the galaxy row using that unit's cost as a target value. If you defeat that unit, gain resources equal to its cost. You can commit other car. Uh, you can commit other units to this attack. So yeah, normally you can attack neutral um, units. So this is kind of cool. So you have a way to take out neutral units. Okay. Next, we have two copies of uh, the next uh, capital ship. It is the Venator class destroyer. Uh, it is a uh, Republic ship, uh, costs seven, it provides three fight, uh, but while it is in play, each of your fighters gains an additional fight, um, and it has seven hit points. All right, then we have Embo, he costs four, he provides two fight, two resources, he's a bounty hunter, Embo gains one fight for each other neutral card you have in play, to a maximum of plus six fight. So Ooh. if you're going the bounty hunter route, you'd want a bunch of neutral cards, which normally Dirk and I weren't a big fan of grabbing neutral cards in our decks, but it's a new play if style. If you play into it. Yeah. All right. And then, so this is the last of the uh, Republic cards I have. So that means you must have some more coming. I have a few, yeah. So um, we got here uh, Mace Windu, who has the best lightsaber in the entire universe, just because it's purple. <laughs> but... Uh, he costs eight. Uh, he provides six flight and two force. Uh, he's a Jedi, and that uh, you reveal the top card of your deck, and if the force is with you, then Mace gains fight equal to the cost of that card up to a minimum of five. So maximum he can, of five. maximum of five. That is right. <laughs> but so he can pack up a, a real wallop there. Uh, but now, if the enemy dis, uh, destroys him in the row, uh, in the uh, Galaxy Row, then they get, it costs them eight to destroy him, so he's tough, but uh, they get four resources and force four. So he's definitely worth it for your enemy to try to destroy if they can. All right, so then we have a, a Gauntlet Starfighter. Costs four, four resources. Um, exile this unit to purchase a card from the Galaxy Discard Pile as if it were in the Galaxy Row and add, it, and add that card to your hand. So this could be a way you... Tr you, you Exile a, an eight cost card or something, and then turn around and grab it on a when it's in the discard pile. So that's kind of cool. Yep. All right. So next we have three copies of the first of my separatist cards. Here it's one cost. It's a B two battle droid that provides two fight. Uh, it is both a droid and a trooper. Um, and then uh, when you play it, you exile a separatist card from the galaxy row. If you do, draw a card. And then if he's defeated by your enemy, your enemy will gain one resource. Okay. We've got three copies of a <clears throat> space yacht, which... I want a space yacht. This is a capital ship. Uh, <laughs> so it costs four, uh, provides two resources, and... Yeah, it's got four hit points. And then there's flavor text. <laughs> it's got flavor text. Often a source of pride and only available to to the extra extravagantly wealthy. Large, privately owned ships are sometimes mobilized to assist in the war effort, willingly or otherwise. <laughs> so now, um, then next we have three copies of... The Separatist ship, the Vulture Droid. Ah, we, that's all fuzzy. But it's a droid and a fighter. Uh, it costs two, it provides two fight. Uh, and then when you purchase this unit, you add it to your hand. So it goes straight to your hand from the Galaxy Row. And after it attacks, you exile it. So it's a one-shot. And if your enemy defeats it, they can exile one card from their hand or discard pile. Okay. 
Then we have Django Fett. He costs five. He provides five fight. And he's also attacking the camera, so it's not focusing. Uh, when Django Fett defeats a target in the Galaxy Road draw card. All right. So then we have Nate Gunray. So he is a Separatist officer. He costs two, and he provides two resources. And then when you play him, the next time a card leaves the Galaxy Row this turn, you can replace it with a non-starter card from your exile pile. Uh, if your enemy defeats him, then instead they gain one force. All right, so then we have two copies of the Dreadnought Class Cruiser. It's a capital ship, neutral capital ship. It costs five. Um, it's two uh, fight, and while Dreadnought class cruiser is in play, each of your neutral units gains one fight. And They're definitely trying to push the neutrals on this one, it feels like. <clears throat> okay, so then we have two copies of Stap. Uh, Stap is a uh, two cost unit, dro uh, he's a droid. Uh, he's a uh, cost two, he provides two resources when you play him. And if, there's, if there are more enemy cards than Separatist cards in the Galaxy Row, then you uh, gain a force. So he's actually one that if you're kind of behind in the Galaxy Row, he helps you out a little bit there. But if your enemy destroys him, instead they can exile a card from uh, their hand or discard pile. Okay. Then we've got Cad Bane. He costs six. He provides four fight, two resources. He's a bounty hunter. If you have at least three neutral cards in play, choose destroy a capital ship your opponent has in play Whoa. or exile one card from your hand or discard pile. Oh, I like him. So he can take out a capital ship. One shot it. All right. All right. Uh, the next Separatist card then is uh, the Droid Deca Droid. Uh, it has a three cost, uh, provides three fight. And if you exile at least one card this turn, the unit gains an additional two fight. And for your enemy's reward, if they destroy him, they instead get two force. All right. Then we have Fett's Fire Spray. Not to be confused with Slave One. Um, cost seven, four fight, three recruit. I mean, sorry, three resources. Uh, it's a transport. Add a neutral unit from your discard pile to your hand. If it's a bounty hunter that unit gains two fight while attacking a target in the galaxy row this turn. Okay. All right. Next we have the Tri-Fighter. We've got two copies of this card. It is a droid fighter. Uh, it costs three. It provides three fight. And uh, whenever you play it, you exile a Separatist card from the galaxy row. If you do, you can deal three damage to a capital ship your opponent has in play. Uh, if your enemy destroys it, they instead gain three resources. Okay. Then, my friends, we have Hondo. Uh, he costs eight. He's got four fight, four resources. Uh, when you purchase a card with a cost of four or more, draw a card. And he's a scoundrel. <laughs> okay. Next up, we have Watt Tambor. <laughs> Watt Tambor is a Separatist officer. He costs three. He provides two resources and one force. Uh, but when you play him, you discard a neutral card from the Galaxy Row. Uh, if the Force was with you, you can replace it with a Separatist card from the Galaxy discard pile. And if your enemy defeats him, instead, they gain two Force. All right, yeah, now we're to the point of the, my, the deck I got that's got some Republic cards. So we've got two copies of the V-19 Torrent. It costs one. It provides two fight. It's a fighter. Reveal the top card of your deck. You may discard it. And then if the Separatists take it out, uh, then you gain one resource. Okay. Or I should say your opponent. Doesn't have to be a Separatist. Okay. And then now we have two copies of the Munificent Class Frigate. Uh, it is a capital ship. Separatist. Uh, costs three. While it's in play, each turn it will provide one fight and one resource. And it's got three hit points. And uh, while it's out, you can exile a Separatist card from the Galaxy Row. If you do, you can repair two damage from your base. Oh, nice. All right. Then we have an ATRT. Uh, costs two, two fight. It's a trooper. If you have another trooper in play, repair two damage from your base. 
and if your opponent takes it out, they can exile a card from your hand or discard pile. All right, next up we have two copies of the Magna Guard, which is all fuzzy. There we go. Two copies of the Magna Guard. He is a Separatist droid trooper. Uh, he costs four. He provides three fight and one force. Um, and then while he's in play, each of your unique cards, which unique is the little star in front of card names like, well, we'll use, we'll use good old Jar Jar here. See how he's got the little star in front of his name? That's the unique symbol. So, each of your new unique cards gains one fight, two fight instead if the force is with you. And if your enemy takes them out, they instead gain three force. All right. Next, we've got two copies of a Bark Trooper. Uh, cost two, provides two resources. It's a trooper. While you have another trooper in play, this unit gets plus two fight. And if your opponent takes it out, you can they can exile one card from your hand or discard pile. All right. Uh, next up, we have two copies of the MTT, which is a Separatist vehicle. It costs four, provides one fight, and three resources. And while it's in play, uh, or when you play it, place the next droid you purchase this turn on top of your deck. Um, and then if your enemy takes them out, uh, instead, they gain four resources. All right. Then we've got a capital ship for the, Re the Republic. I love the looks of that ship. It cost... Let's get that under out from under our window here a little bit. Uh, so it costs two. It provides two resources. And swap a card in your hand with the top card of your deck. All right. That's pretty cool. All right. Uh, next, we have three copies of the uh, droid control ship. It's a separatist uh, capital ship. It costs four. It provides two resources. And while it's out, uh, you can purchase a droid from your exile pile as though it were in your galaxy room. It has four hit points. All right. Then we have Ayla Secura. She costs three, two fight, one force. She's a Jedi. While she is in play and the force is with you, each of your trooper units gains plus one fight. Okay. And your opponent can spend two, three fight to gain two force. Okay. All right, uh, next up here we have the AAT. It is a Separatist vehicle. It costs uh, five, but it provides five fight. And then uh, when you play it, you can exile a Separatist card from the Galaxy Row. If you do, you gain two force. Uh, your opponent, uh, if they uh, spend five fight, they can. their reward is they can exile up to two cards from their hand or discard pile. All right. Then we've got three copies of an arc trooper cost three provides three fight it's a trooper if you have a jedi or another trooper in play deal two damage to your opponent's base and then if your opponent takes it out they get three resources okay ah. next up we have admiral trench admiral trench is a separatist officer uh they cost five uh they provide three fight and two resources uh, oops, you can't really see that very well, can you? Uh, but, uh, okay, there we go. Uh, while he's out, you can draw uh, one card, two cards instead, if the if, uh, if you had a capital ship in play at the start of your turn, so uh, if it hasn't been destroyed yet. And then uh, if the enemy takes them out instead, it costs them five, but they gain three resources and two force. All right, then we've got, oops, we've got a blurry Captain Rex. He's still, he's still refusing to focus. Um, yeah, it's just this camera is just not behaving today. Uh, so he costs three, provides two resources. He's a trooper. Captain Rex gains one fight for each unique unit in play and in the galaxy row. And if your opponent takes him out, they get two force. All right. Uh, then we have... General Grievous. So General Grievous is a separatist officer. Yeah. Yeah. That's not focusing. All right. Well, he uh, he's a separatist officer. Uh, he costs five. He provides three or five fight. And then uh, when he <laughs> defeats 
<laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> General Grievous. <laughs> He's coughing too much that it won't focus. There we go. Uh, so whenever he defeats a, a target in the galaxy row, you can exile a droid from your hand. And, of course, these guys have a lot of droids. And if you do that, you can receive the, that target's reward a second time. And then uh, if the enemy takes them out instead, they get uh, three resources and two force. All right. And then the last card that I have in my stack is a Delta 7B, which is a, a Republic fighter. Costs three, three fight. Um, and it's a Jedi fighter. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a Jedi, you may draw it. If it's not, you may discard it. And if your enemy defeats it, they gain two force. Hey. Uh, then next we have two copies of the Separatist Dreadnought. It is a Separatist capital ship. Uh, it costs six. It provides four fight, uh, five hit points. But while it's out, uh, they have flavor text. The right to command each mighty Providence class dreadnought is often squabbled over by high-ranking officials. Okay, <laughs> it it gains flavor text. All right. Next we have uh, Asaji uh, Ventress. Uh, she's uh, a uh, separatist scoundrel. Uh, she costs seven. She provides five fight and. To, uh, to force, uh, but uh, with her you can discard each neutral unit from the galaxy row and one unit enemy if the force is with you. Oh, that's so huge. That discarding is discarding the yeah. neutral units. And then, well, and and yeah, you can but I mean, even, force yeah. too. But yeah, the neutral units just definitely even don't. if the force isn't with you, that's pretty good. Yep. Uh, and then as a reward, if the enemy takes them out, they can purchase a card of their faction for free. And then the last card. Count Dooku. Count Dooku. So he is a Sith with the Separatists. Uh, he costs eight. He provides six fight and two force. Uh, but then uh, if the force is with you, you can swap a unit in the galaxy row with a non-starter card from your exile pile. So you can bring back some of the exiled cards that way. Um, and then if the enemy takes them out instead, they get four resources and four force. So he's definitely worth it for either side to either recruit or take out. Yep. Okay, so that was um, that was the the cards for um, the Clone Wars ex expansion standalone. So I thought it was kind of cool with this uh, with the Separatists how they're basically you've got a lot of droids in them and then they're looking to discard the droids to gain other abilities uh, to to improve themselves. So it's like. You know, you might not necessarily want to exile your droids, even though you can get better cards, mm -hmm. because discarding them instead can give you things. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Well, also, droids are pretty expendable. Yep. But, you know, then they got a whole bounty hunter strategy if you want to go a lot of neutral cards. Um, you know, because we've had games, like, well, we haven't played this expansion, obviously, but from the first one, where the galaxy just has all neutral cards or you never see your faction, you know, because like a bad shuffle or you don't see good cards. You're, it's like, yay, I finally see Han Solo and then your opponent kills him or something, you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, I love deck builders, but I mean, that is, is is a little bit painful whenever you've got a market, you know, depending on whichever game it is, whenever you've got a market out there and there aren't cards that play into the strategy you're trying to, you're trying to build and it causes you to potentially have to change your strategy completely in the middle of the game. Yeah. And, you know, that means you're starting over, so your opponent's already got uh, a speed advantage on you at that point, generally. So it can be hard to recover from that whenever that happens. Right. It's not impossible, but it's definitely difficult. So anytime they, you get the abilities to do things like that, that's pretty good. Yeah. So... So, yeah, so apparently the there's a new... Uh, there's an optional rule, because you can't bounty hunt or sabotage neutral cards like you like you can the other faction but then it says uh either player can spend their resources you can spend resources to discard um neutral cards as a that's an a, optional rule so basically you can pay for them and not take them into your deck yeah is that what it is and yeah. yeah if you've got if you're if you've got nothing out there and you need to get some stuff out of that that that's worth it to do yeah. Now, one thing they also have in here, since this is um, a, a different expansion, say you want to play um, Old Republic versus the Empire. You can do that, 
But what you got to do is you got to pull, you got to make sure that you pull like the Imperial cards yep. and the Republic cards and then choose one of the expansion's neutral cards to, oh, so to you build don't, your galaxy. So you're only using the neutrals from one set. Yeah. Oh, dang. There was some there was some bounty hunter cards from the first one that I thought were get, worked really good in this, but okay. Yeah, because it says choose one of the two neutral decks or or you can select randomly if you cannot decide. But you're choosing from one of the games. But so you would take the Empire cards from the you know, the, the first expansion and then the the Republic cards from this expansion. Yeah, and because, that's, the, that's called cross edition play. Yeah, we didn't count them out. I haven't fact checked it, but I'm pretty sure that you have the same number of cards for each, yeah. each it, of the factions. Yes, yes. It's it's 30, 30 cards for each. So each faction gets 30 cards and there's 30 neutral cards. Okay. So it's always a 90 card galaxy. So, anyways, so this uh, looks inter interesting. We, 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 like, we both like the, the original game and. This is the game that Bob had told me that was coming out at some point. So <laughs> if you saw one of our favorite game Fridays. Um, anyways, so thank you for watching, everyone. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing this one with all four factions. Yeah, well, we need a couple, have to try that. couple more people for that. We can do it. All right. So catch you later, everyone. Hey everyone, if you like that, we got more videos. Dirk's going to try to point in the right spot. There should be one. No. There should be one over here. There should be one over here. And you can subscribe down here. Thank you. And Dirk's channeling James again. <laughs>